It produces the same torque as a V6 Commodore, but it weighs 400 kilograms less. It delivers 54 miles per gallon. That's better than a Mazda 3. It's got just as much rubber on the road as an XR6 Falcon, but it emits less CO2 than a Toyota Corolla. So that means this one is exactly the wrong colour. This is one of the few diesel engine sports coupes on the market. The Audi TT 2.0 TDI Quattro, present appearances to the contrary, could just be one of the greenest sports cars you've ever seen. anytime soon as a loose filling detector but when you get it out onto one of these roads where you can actually have a play you'll be pretty glad it is the rest of the time when you know when you're just tooling around town you just have to put up with it and say hey I bought a sports car you'll do naught to 100 in 7.5 seconds so it's not exactly setting the world on fire there but You've got a massive torque, so when you're up and rolling in between the corners, that 350 newton metres of torque, well, it really does the job. If you want the TT turbo diesel, get used to changing gears because there's no automatic transmission available. It's a good thing because this manual is sensational. It's a really close ratio six-speed gearbox and the throws are nice and short, it just does everything right. The only criticism, and it's a minor one if you like heel and toe gear changing, is that the throttle pedal's just a little bit too low to really sink your teeth into heel and towing. It's a bit of a stretch to get back to that lower gear. TDI stands for turbocharged direct injection. It means unbeatable economy and the kind of torque production that similar capacity petrol engines can only dream about. There's one important trade-off. You just don't get the same acceleration as you do with petrol. But there is a ton of grip, razor sharp steering and a massive torque that makes the drive just about unstoppable once you're rolling. This second generation TT is clearly evolved from the first, which debuted in the late 1990s. But you really don't see just how far it's come until you put it side by side with its predecessor. The interior is elegant, understated, minimalist. It's packed with features, but not complexity. There's no start-stop button, no proximity key. You're not confronted with a bewildering array of buttons or menus. You even have to adjust the seats the old-fashioned way. If you're in the market for a serious sports coupe, the same sort of cash would get you into a Nissan 370Z or a BMW 135i. But if you're more in the market for an all-wheel drive, you could buy a top-spec Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution or a Subaru WRX STI. All four competitors have a few things in common. They're all petrol, they all produce a little more torque and a lot more power than the diesel TT. They're all around two seconds faster to 100 k's but they all drink roughly twice the fuel. And none of them looks as sleek, not even the Z. You're gonna to have to search for the diesel pump every time you fuel up. And it is gonna get all over your hands. An odor diesel doesn't complement too many aftershaves. But if you give a toss about the environment, and you'd rather be dead than drive a Prius, then this is a car you really should shortlist.